Say, he is worthy of our praise. And I put here praise and the river of his presence. Because how many know praise releases his presence? In Psalms 100, 1 through 7, are you believing with me now? You didn't come for me to entertain you, right? Let's see how this guy does on a scale of 1 to 10. You came to believe with me, right? This is not a show, right? I didn't come to entertain you. I come to preach and prophesy over you. Amen. Sometimes we come to church looking for the show. I'm not going to put a show on. I'm going I'm to preach and prophesy. Say, he is worthy of our praise. Psalms 100, 1 through 7. Oh, come, let us sing to the Lord. Let us shout joyfully to the rock of our salvation. Let us come before his presence with thanksgiving or grateful praise. Let us, there it is again, shout joyfully to him with psalms. So for those that say, freedom is too loud for me, you're going to have a hard time when you go to heaven. Because when you get to heaven, that bass is so on point, that's like bass in your face. The bass is so strong in heaven that when that angelic, angelic choir kicks in, the place shakes where the foundation shakes. Feels like it's an earthquake. Come on, somebody. And it's so loud, it's unbelievable. It said it's like, it's like the sound of like a, like, like a Yosemite waterfall, but multiply that by a thousand. It's just... <sighs> the devil has nothing on God's praise. So when people say, well, I don't believe in shouting all out in church because you don't believe the Bible because you're still trying to make God fit into your little pea brain head and your religious strategy or your personality profile. But when it comes to God, you praise him his way on his terms because he is worthy of it. Now, somebody ought to be obedient and shout joyfully to the Lord. Yeah, why, Pastor? Because why? Why should I do that? For, for the Lord is gr a great God. Ah, uh, how great is he? Well, he's the great king above all other gods. Well, that's pretty great. And his hands... Are and his hand are the deep places of the earth. So as low as you can go, God's going to be there. And the heights of the highest hills, God's going to be there. And the sea, it's his. Imagine God's water bill. He made it. And he made the dry land. Oh, come, let us worship and bow down. Let us kneel before the Lord, our maker, for he is our God, and we are the people of his pasture and the sheep of his hand. He is worthy of our absolute praise. I looked up the word praise. I looked up the word praise, and it comes from a, a Hebrew word called tehilia. Not tequila. Got to explain that at freedom. You know, people here, you know what I mean? Tehelia. Say it with me. Tehelia. And it means a celebration. So when we praise God, it needs to be a celebration. Like I was sitting there and I thought, man, it would be great. We should have big balloons and everything right now. 
Like a big, I said, why? Because we're praising God. Like confetti and fire. Like we're praising God, man. I think I'm going to launch somebody on a cannon up there. Like, Hallelujah. Allotting, it means a cheering. A cheering. Watch this. Making much of somebody to glorify, exalting of someone that is praiseworthy, giving them songs of adoration and admiration. And I thought, man, this is interesting to me. Because I like sports. I like the NBA. I like everything, right? And on a good, like yesterday, the Milwaukee Bucks beat the Atlanta Hawks. And then about a minute in, 10 seconds, 20 seconds left in the game. The Atlanta Hawks coach realized there's no way his team's going to win. So he pulled all his best players off the floor. And the next thing you know, the people erupted with praise. Because even though their team lost, they really did the best they could. Like the little engine that could. That kid Trey Young. And they just did the best they could with what they had. They just didn't have enough talent. But the people honored them and praise them because they realized, man, our Atlanta Hawks are worthy of praise. And the whole auditorium, 20,000 people stood up for about a minute and just shouted and praised their NBA basketball teams. And the announcer before it happened said, I hope they do that. Because that's what you do when somebody's worthy of your praise. But yet when it comes to God, you're trying to tell me that being loud is wrong, but yet I could praise Trey Young? I could praise... LeBron James, I, I could praise Michael Jordan, I, I, I could praise Mike Tyson, I can praise, but I can't, pra what? something has, something is wrong. Who told us to be quiet in church? Who told us that that's wrong in church? Somebody trained you, educated you, that that's not the way you do it in church, but yet, we do it at the NBA. We do it at the Los Dodgers. Come on, somebody. We do it with the prize fighter. We do it with a, a band. We do it at Coachella Fest. We do it in the nightclub. Now, I wish somebody would give God a Tahelia. We got to break the spirit of religion and tradition. Somebody told us to be holy was to be pious. Hallelujah. Espiritu Santo. God bless you, my brother. There's nothing wrong with that. Do your thing, brother. But don't stop me from praising my God the way my Bible said. And the Bible said we shall become more undignified than this. The roof, the roof, the roof. <laughs> Say it! And that is why we have lost a generation because the spirit of religion and the spirit of judgment and the spirit of condemnation has taken the shout out of Zion. But when David brought the ark of God back, he said, it's time to give God the praise that he is worthy. Is he not worthy of your shout? Is he not worthy of your hallelujah? Is he not worthy? He is worthy. Let us, Psalms 95, 2, let us come into his presence, presencia, with, come on. Same thing, praise. Let us shout. There it is again. It's all over. You, 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 look at the book of Psalms is called the book of praise. 
Those were, no, those were not meant to be read. They're meant to be sang. And over 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 and over, you find where the Bible talks about clap your hand and raise your hand and dance before the Lord and make music and shout and sing. And, and then yet the church are like, like, and then when you do that, people get real like, oh, that, they're crazy. They're so crazy. They're such a hypocrite, huh? Oh, that church is too church. You go, it's wild. It's just so crazy. And you're like, wait a minute. You're the same joker that drank like seven dos equis, three spritzers, come on somebody, and five shots, and you acting like a fool up in the nightclub, and now you're going to tell me that my church is crazy. You crazy. You a hypocrite. I'm going to give God glory, man. Yeah, see how we are? We're selective on our praise. Yeah, we're, the, the baseball team can get my praise. The, the basketball team can get my praise. The actor can get my praise. The movie star can get my praise. The, the famous singer can get my praise. Everybody else can get it, but not God. Not God. The devil is a filthy liar. You see the lie? It's a lie. And we're going to break this in the Sound of Freedom series. All right, tell your neighbor, when you praise... When you tell him, when you praise, you come into his presence. How many love the presence of God? Right? Like at an NBA game, like when, I remember one year Robert Ori made a shot. It was like Sacramento Kings, and we hated them, you know what I mean? North versus South, we hated the Kings. Lottie Divock, all that, we just didn't like them. Bibby, and we just, no, if you're a Laker fan, you just didn't like the Kings. You didn't like their face. You just, you, it was like a, when you were a baby, they put on your baby bottle. You do not like the kings. Come on, somebody. Just put it in your formula. You hate the king. So, you know, and then, and then, and then Robert Ori made that shot. And man, it was so euphoric. I was in my living room and I remember pushing my friend on the floor and we're like rolling on the floor. Ah! That was praise. And Robert Ori deserved it right there. That was amazing. Did you, you try to do something like that in church? Oh, they're weird. They're fanatic. Oh, they're over the top. We have to renew our mind and not allow people and religion to steal what belongs to God. He's the rock of your salvation, brother. You're going to heaven because of him. <laughs> Period. Period. Dot. That's all she wrote. Sign it, baby. Psalms 46.4, read with me, say, oh, I love this. That's the first time I ever saw this, ever, last night. Say, there is a river. Just say, like, tell your neighbor, there's a river. Tell your other neighbor, there's a river. And tell your neighbor, and the streams of this river bring joy. Okay, so there's a river. And what if somebody told you, there's a river. And if you find that water and you drink it, you'll live forever. What, what, what's the next thing you do? Where is it? <laughs> what if somebody told you, there's a river, you drink it, and you get 15 years of strength. What, 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 what's, your next, what's your next question? Oh, no, first you, you're going to play it off like, oh, really? So, uh, so where is it? <laughs> So where, where is that, uh, that, that river? Or I'm like, I love fishing. So if you said, man, there's a river in Whittier. Yeah, and there's, no one knows about it. But in that river is trout, big trout. Really? Yeah, in Whittier, yeah. Where is it? Because <laughs> I'm about to get my pole and my hiking boots and jump some fence or something because I'm going to get to that river. And the Bible says there is a river. Say, there is a river. Come on, just elbow somebody. Say, there, there is a river. And this river brings joy to the entire city of God. That's why I believe the church needs to be the happiest place in the world. Your family group needs to be the happiest. Why? Because there's a river going through that. This river is in the holy place 
where the Most High lives. So this river literally flows from the throne of God. So basically God's on his throne, there's the river, and from there the river goes from God. And how many know God is full of joy? It's almost like he pollutes the water with joy. And then from God, it goes throughout the city and everybody's drinking that joy juice. <laughs> because the river comes from his presence. If you get rid of the river, you still have the joy because the river came from him. Tell your neighbor, there is a river that cures depression, that cures bipolar disorder, that cures panic attack. I know you went through battle, and I know you've been to war, and I know you got postpartum, but there is a river. Oh, God. Psalm 1611. One more time. Tell your neighbor, there is a river. And if, you, I, I can, if God can get you in that river, your days of depression are over. Your days of addiction are over. Your days of suicide are over. Your, your, your days of depression and oppression and, and anxiety, anxiety. When you, we can get you down in that river, baby. I was dipped in that river and I've never been the same. I was a drug addict and I got dipped in the river and I've been set free. Shout, there is a river. Tell them, in your presence. Say presence. Now say this with me. God lives in the, pres in the praises of his people. In your presence. In your pr so you got to think like this. Praise brings presence. Praise brings presence. You're the devil. What are you afraid of? You ain't afraid of me. He ain't afraid of you. But he's afraid of who you can release. When praise goes up, his presence comes down. I feel like preaching a little bit. I said when praise goes up, His presence comes down. And in His presence, there is joy. In His presence, there is peace. In His presence, there is victory. When praise goes up. Because God is attracted to your praise. He cannot resist your praise. Tell your neighbor, you want to know why God saved you? You should have been dead. You should have lost your mind. You should have died on the 605. But God spared you because he knew when he set you free, he was going to get a praise out of you. It's like the woman at the well. He said, I got to go to Samaria because in Samaria, I'll find me a woman that I'll fill with my power and I'll get a praise out of her. Somebody give God a shout of praise. I'm going to take my time. I'm going to take my time. Say with me, in your presence is the fullness of joy. And at your right hand 
our pleasures. What kind of pleasures? See, that's what we're looking for, pleasure. Satisfy me. That woman at the well, she was looking for another man. If I get me another man, then I'll have pleasure. And God told her, you don't need another man. You don't need another pill. You don't need another drink. What you need is that river. And my friend, there is a river. Elbow somebody and say, there is a river of his presence. It's not just joy. It's a fullness of joy. Say amen. amen. Psalms 36 says, they are refreshed. This is crazy. With rich foods in your house. I grew up on Top Ramen. And man, I'll tell you, I'll make a top ramen look like a gourmet steak. I'll tell you that right now. I don't even want to tell you where I learned how to make a spread. Come on, somebody. Some of you are looking at me like, you know about a spread? Yeah, I know about a spread. Now watch. But you know, I've also been to some, some bougie restaurants. You know what I mean? Where you go and they put your chair out. Oh. One the first time somebody did that, I said, what are you doing? I could sit myself. I was like... They put your chair and they scoot you in. Oh, and they get a little napkin and they put it on you like they go. Oh. I look at Liz and say, see, I told you, girl, follow me. And they, say, they put napkins on us and stuff. And the waiter comes out with some sparkling water, sir. Like this. Pour it. Oh, wait, everything's perfect. You drop crumbs on the table. They get a little scraper. Wow. And they start bringing the food out. Yeah, I'll take that steak. Uh huh. How much is it? Fifty-eight. Fifty. Fifty-eight dollars. We're gonna share. Yeah, we'll take it. Come on. Son. You want that to go? Yeah, I want it to go. Come on. But God says, in my house, you eat rich foods. How many know? You eat what you become, what you eat. And when you start eating the rich food, get, get ready for the riches of God. Because it takes your processing to another level. Shout rich food. And say, and you make them drink from the river of your pleasure. You make them drink from the river. In God's house, you don't just eat rich food, but God gives you a strong drink. He gives it from the river. He literally says, hey, Gabriel, here's a cup. Dip it in the river. Give it to Samuel. Give it to Sarah. Give it to I. Drink up. Drink up. And when you drink and you drink and you drink, depression leaves your body. Somebody ought to shout like there is a river. Oh, I got to hold. I feel like I'm holding up. A horse, like a fat, a thoroughbred horse. Just let me finish. Say, I will be satisfied. Now, I need you to say it out of your heart. I will be satisfied in your presence. So that means if you're not in the presence, you have been built by God to be satisfied. Let me say it. Let me listen to what I'm saying. You and I have been built by God to be satisfied. When you eat at a table like I just talked about and you're done, you are done. They're like, you want dessert? I can't eat anymore. I'm full. And God says, that's how I want you to live when it comes to satisfaction. And the devil brings that midnight booty call. You say, no, girl, I'm full. When your old friends call you, it's time to party on the 4th of July. No, I'm, I'm full. Come on, somebody. When your ex-lover calls you at 2 in the morning, what's up, girl? Sorry, joker, but I'm full. 
Cause I've been full on the new wine Somebody shout! 